The next approach I'll be taking is a trend projections. So um, this involves the process of obtaining your uh, intercept and the slope that you are needed to uh, put together an equation, linear equation, where the predicted value is a function of your month value or time series value. Okay, so uh, I will do this in two different ways. Number one, I'm going to use um, uh, Excel graphic method to ask Excel to pull out a trend line and then ask Excel to to demonstrate the uh, ex the, the linear equation and then where you can see the uh, intercept and as well as the uh, slope. And then our second step, I'll explicitly calculate the intercept and slope based on the equation provided. Okay, so I'm going to do the first approach. So I'm going to highlight D column and D column only. Now you could highlight other columns altogether, but uh, D column only will work as well. So this is the current trend. This is a trend. And I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the curve and then I'll right click and then ask it to add a trend line for me. And as you can see, the trend line is display, being displayed here. And one more thing I want to do is I'm going to ask it to display equation on chart. Okay, display equation on chart. So this is essentially a completed um, equation that you can use for the predictions. Okay, so uh, 1684.7 is your slope uh, that represents amount at which revenue increases. Um, as month advance, uh, in this case it's quarter data, as you advance to next quarter. And then 1, 2, 4, 5, 4, 9 is your intercept. This is basically your, your baseline. Okay, so um, yeah, this is a linear equation. And the uh, what I would do in next is I'm going to rely on the equation given by your textbook to explicitly calculate, explicitly calculate the um, slope and the intercept, and then using uh, the complete equation to come out with new predictions. Okay, this is what I mean. This is what I mean by calculating B and A, which is the slope and the intercept. So um, mm, I will do necessary arrangement here to make that calculable, uh, easy to calculate in Excel. So I will do, I will add a column here called period. And essentially, this is our x value. Okay, this is our x value. And we have more than 12 period in this case. Okay, and then uh, revenue is essentially our y. Okay, this is essentially our y. And the if you look at the B, uh, I'm going to break it down in two different steps. So I'm going to calculate the numerator first, and then the denominator next. And then I'll be calculating B, which is the ratio of two, okay? So for numerator, the first component is the sum of x, y, which is sum of x, y, which is our sum product, okay? Sum product of x and y. Okay, and this is our uh, sum product, which is x and y. Well, you can also calculate that using a dummy column like this, using a tabular approach. Okay, and you double click. Again, you need more space. And I'm going to say this is a total, and then also average. Okay, um, and the second thing I need uh, if I look at this, I, I, I've taken care of this part, and then I need to take care of an x bar, y bar, which is average of x and average of y. So I'm going to do average of x here. And then uh, next is average of y. So I've got those two quantities here. So n is essentially number of period here. Okay, so we have 20 period here, so your n is 20, you can just memorize that. And I also need uh, sum of x squared, sum of x squared. So I want to create another dummy column that will contain the 
squared value for x. Let me move my, okay. Okay. So square of 20 is 400, which is correct. Okay, so for those two quantities, uh, it looks like I need uh, sum. Sum of all of them. And then sum for next one. Again, uh, this is essentially the sum product. Essentially, it's the same with the result from the sum product formula. Okay, uh, I think I am done. I have this part, and then I have uh, n x bar minus uh, x bar squared, which is x which x bar is here. Okay, so I think my numerator can be calculated as uh, sum of x y sum product of x y minus twenty x bar times y bar. Okay, and the next one, your denominator is sum of x squared. Sum of x squared. Okay, minus 20 times x bar squared. So it's not, it's not x, uh, the, the, the average of x squared, but it's squared of x bar, which is this guy right here squared. So let's double check. G22 is my sum of x squared minus 20 and then x bar is this guy here and then I squared the quantity. If you make it more precise uh, this is going to be it. Okay so my uh, B which is the ratio between those two will be 1 6 84. So 1684, which is exactly the same slope you've seen from the previous approach. Okay, uh, with that, we're, we can calculate the A. A here is uh, Y bar minus B is, uh, what's our B? B is calculated here, times X bar is here. So again, this is the uh, this is the intercept that we've seen from the previous approach. So when you have those two, when you have those two uh, numbers ready, then you can basically use the first equation to come up with a prediction. So your trend projection for the first period is a. I'm going to absolute reference this value plus one times b, which is a slope. I'm going to also absolute reference this. So as you can see that this quantity is similar to the actual revenue you have observed. So I'm just going to drag it. As you can see that you see similar results here. Not exactly the same, but it's pretty similar. Uh, because here uh, you're essentially a value that's all over the places where this is just uh, all the dots in the linear equation that uses A as intercept, uh, B as a slope. Okay, this is essentially the trend line projection. So with that being said, uh, we can actually think about what is the prediction for the 30th period, okay, if that is your interest, if that is something that you want to know. So as you can see that because we have equation, as long as we know the number for the period, and we can easily calculate whatever, um, we can easily calculate the prediction. This is essentially the trend projection approach.